Today on JD Cars, we're installing the Dorsch Engineering N55 high pressure fuel pump on my BMW F30. So it was a few weeks back now that my high pressure fuel pump evidently bit the dust because I was on the way home from a friend's house and the car was running fine. I got on it pretty good on the highway. And then when I accelerated into and out of the off ramp, I noticed a, a kind of like a clunking feel. It wasn't really producing the same power that it was. And I was like, well, this isn't good. Plugged in my Carly scanner, had a bunch of fault codes come up, sent my diagnostic reading to my Bimmer brain, who, shout out to my Bimmer brain, is an absolute god at <laughs> coding and reading BMW codes. Reach out to him with any of your coding needs. And he said it looked like the high pressure fuel pump. So Keys Motorsports was kind enough to send out a new Dorsch Engineering Stage 1 pump. They do have a Stage 2 pump, but this pump is already going to be a 45% fuel flow increase over the stock pump in the car. That should support our Stage 2 Plus tune very nicely, and we'll be able to let the system know that we're installing this new pump through the boot mode tuning application so we'll just click a little box and reflash it and should be good to go but this is definitely going to be a longer more involved job so without any further ado let's pull the thing in the garage and get to work i'm actually going to show you really quickly what i'm talking about it does not sound good right now no bueno does not idle smooth and it sounds like a Harley or something. I don't even know. All right, so this is definitely a pretty involved repair. I do have the Dorsch engineering instructions printed out. They have these on their webpage for the product. Very in-depth instructions here. So we'll be referencing this throughout the entire installation. Our first step and do not forget to do this, is to disconnect the battery in the trunk because this high pressure fuel pump operates at about 2,900 PSI. So obviously we don't want that exploding in our face. Let's go disconnect the battery and make sure we're safe. Using a 10 millimeter socket, we'll loosen up our positive battery terminal here. Just loosen it up a bit. And then I like to take a microfiber cloth or any cloth really. Pull up the positive terminal lead and we'll put a microfiber on top of that terminal so that it can't make contact. Leave that there. And then another helpful trick from Keys Motorsports, take a microfiber and just lightly tie it around the trunk latch so that we can't accidentally lock ourselves out of the trunk. Now under the hood here, we'll pull off this weather stripping, which has an electrical connector right here. So we'll undo the wire, pull off the weather stripping and along the top of this plastic piece here this plastic cowling are a bunch of 10 millimeter little fasteners but they're not actually fasteners so don't try to fully remove it just give it a quick turn to the left about 90 degrees and releasing all of those will allow us to pull off these trim pieces this will give us more room to work. We can pop off our engine cover and carefully remove this foam insulation in the back of the engine bay. We'll use a six millimeter to loosen up this hose clamp. And the rest of the air box is actually just held in by little grommets. We'll disconnect this hose here and this electrical connection, and we should be able to pop it out now. Next, using a T25 Torx bit, we're gonna remove the two screws holding on this bracket, and we're also gonna disconnect the mass airflow sensor right here. Now we have to disconnect the ECU connectors right back here. The, <laughs> the backmost one is not easy to see at all. I have a light on it, and hopefully I can show you how this connector is secured. You can see I pulled back this tab, pulled it down, and uh, it's kind of a loop setup. As you can see in this photo from Dorsch, this whole U, you need to slide down, and that will actually pop the connector up and out. And now we have to focus 
on these three main connectors here. Using a screwdriver or a pick tool, we'll press down on this little middle clip and then the gray tab rotates towards the back of the vehicle. So we'll probably start with this connector, pull it out, get some room and repeat with the other two. Using some masking tape, I labeled our three connectors just to avoid mixing them up. But those three are out. Now we gotta disconnect the two remaining square connectors right here. Those are just two simple press tabs. A little side tip, releasing this retainer that holds the electrical connections in this bracket allowed me to pull this whole bracket out and it actually gives you a lot better access to get your hands in here. I do suggest pulling that out. At this point we have the ECU fully disconnected. We can proceed to the next step. Next we have three more electrical connections to disconnect. The first being right here, next to this connector, and one more on our charge pipe. Now Dorsch wants us to remove the entire charge pipe and to be perfectly honest my FTP charge pipe here is a very tight fit and I don't really want to fully remove it so we'll use a pick tool release this ring right here I was able to rock the throttle body right off of here and hopefully we won't have to fully remove it we can just remove our four 10 millimeter fasteners holding on the throttle body we'll see if we can jimmy it out of there removing those four bolts should allow us to pull our throttle body out. Keep in mind that it's still connected. Just gonna pull it up a little bit to gain better access to the plug. So the electrical connector on the throttle body is a little bit different and it can give you a hard time. Best way to go about releasing it is to actually just take a little pick tool, push the connector like so. Should release that tab and we can pull the throttle body out. Now preparing to remove our intake manifold, we'll remove the seven nuts and bolts holding it on. They're all 11 millimeter and there's one right there. Now we can pull out the intake manifold. Do be careful not to get debris into the engine. Just pop this guy off of the intake so it doesn't get damaged. Get these guys out of the way and out comes the intake manifold. Whoa, that is not what we want going on our engine. And on that note, I'm gonna take some painter's tape and completely mask off the intake so we don't get anything in there. All right, with the intake safely taped off, we're gonna grab some shop towels, anything absorbent really, get them kind of folded up. I'm gonna tuck this one under this 17 millimeter on the inlet side and we'll do the same thing up at the fuel rail here tuck this underneath now with some gloves and safety glasses on we're going to crack the top nut here on the fuel rail ever so slightly we just want to release the pressure and we'll do the same thing down at the pump now the system is depressurized pop off our lines here. I'm gonna keep those towels in place because we do still have some fuel coming out, but we'll give that a second to drain. Again, using our 17 millimeter, we'll break this nut loose on the other side of the pump. We'll disconnect our vacuum pump line. Disconnect that guy. We'll disconnect the electrical connector to our fuel pump. Now, using a T30 Torx bit, we're gonna remove the OEM fuel pump. Now do be very cautious here. Make sure that the area is clean and that no debris gets into the fuel pump housing because it is very sensitive to debris. Carefully and evenly pull out the old high pressure fuel pump. There it is, this little sucker. Now using an E10 female Torx, we'll remove the knock sensor. And all we have to do is pull out this factory E10 Torx bolt and we'll replace it with the Allen bolt that's included. That's a five millimeter Allen head bolt. And I do want to take a quick second to note how neatly and nicely packaged up all this stuff is from Dorsch Engineering. We have our little bag here that has that Allen head bolt, our new lines, 
and the pump, of course. But we'll grab this new Allen head bolt and install it. Just in case there's any confusion about which one that was, this is our new five millimeter Allen head bolt. And you can see the head is recessed and kind of countersunk. So it's gonna be a lot more low profile, allows more room for this setup. Now using an E12 female Torx or 13 millimeter on some newer vehicles, we have two bolts to remove underneath this plastic cable holder. There's one right here and one towards the back. You can locate them by looking at the two clamps on the fuel line. There's one right here and one right here. We'll come underneath, remove those two, and then we can remove this line. So removing those two bolts will release our line and that gives us access to the quick connector right here. You probably will have a gray ring around this quick connector that you'll have to remove. Mine appears to be missing, but I'm gonna grab a rag, place it under this line and disconnect it. We'll now take the Dorsch Engineering soft line, low pressure line, and we're replacing the line we just removed with this guy. We're first gonna feed it under the pump housing. Get it behind the pump, pull it all the way through, and we'll route this line underneath miscellaneous electrical connections here. My protective cap popped off just in time. Grab that, pop off the protective cap, and we'll plug this end of the line into the quick connector that we just released. Just in case you didn't see that, there's our new connection. Using an 18 and 19 millimeter box wrench, I'm gonna tighten that black coupler there because I did notice it wasn't yet tightened. Now you might be asking, how are we gonna secure this new soft line, Jake? Well, let me tell you, because Dorsch Engineering has a sweet little low pressure line mount here, sweet little bracket, they have their logo etched in, but I wanna take a second to show you something really cool. I've never seen a, a line clip like this. Just watch how this, this this operates. It's one solid piece of plastic, but it moves like a mechanical part. See that? Pretty cool. This bracket is gonna slip right behind our starter cable bracket. So using a 13 millimeter, we'll remove this bolt. We'll slide our new Dorsch bracket behind the starter bracket and reinstall our bolt. Another nice little innovation from Dorsch Engineering here. They include an alignment tool, so we'll slip our new pump flange over the alignment tool, install our O-ring, which I'm actually going to quickly oil up a little bit. All right, I oiled up our O-ring very carefully, evenly slide this whole apparatus into our pump housing. We'll now install these two supplied T30 Torx bolts. And I'm just getting this side down to the point that it's like barely finger tight. Now I'm gonna install the other one. I'm verifying that the flange is evenly mounted up here. And now we can begin to slowly tighten this down. I'm gonna jump back and forth between the two bolts. It's as tight as I can get them with this. Come back with a ratchet and torque them down. These need to be torqued to 12 Newton meters or about 122 kilogram four centimeters. We can now remove our alignment tool and we can drop in our new Dorsch Engineering stage one pump. I did just lube up the O-ring on here with some oil. We have to be extremely cautious dropping this in to make sure that it slides in evenly and straight. We'll drop in the supplied five millimeter Allen head bolts. And again, I'm gonna be switching between these two bolts very frequently to make sure that this seats evenly and doesn't get off kilter. And again, 
these two bolts are getting torqued to 12 newton meters or about 122 kilogram four centimeters. You can now install the new supplied Dorsch Engineering high pressure line. It is a good idea to lightly oil up our connections here to prevent any galling. We'll hand thread all of these on. So with both high pressure fuel line nuts torqued down to 30 newton meters or just approximate with a box wrench if you don't have the appropriate if you don't have the appropriate equipment, which I don't, don't worry about it. Just make sure that you don't over tighten. Clipped our low pressure fuel line into the Dorsch bracket here, and I also resecured this guy with those two E12 female torques. And we're about to connect our low pressure line. We just have to pull off those two caps, and it's a similar quick connection on this other side here. And we'll start reassembling. I completely lied. The low pressure line is not a quick connect. We actually pull off this crescent shaped uh, little threaded nut. Now we can install the line and this basically slides over that little collar there and we'll tighten it down once it's installed. All right, with our low pressure line installed there, we can now plug in the included adapter. This end plugs into our fuel pump, clips in, and this end goes to our factory connector. All right, so assuming you've successfully made it to this point in your repair, I probably don't need to tell you how to put everything back together. So I'm not gonna cover the full reassembly process, but I do wanna note quickly three quick things. The first being gaskets. We're gonna wanna take a pick tool and remove our intake gaskets. Oh yeah, they're really in there, huh? Remove the old gaskets, all six of those, as well as the gasket on our throttle body. Pick up some new ones, I'll have links, of course, down below. But we wanna replace those. And while we're talking about the throttle body, I'm probably gonna bolt this back onto the intake before reinstalling it, just because those, those bolts are really hard to access from in the engine bay. So hopefully we can reinstall this on the intake. We'll see, I'll let you know. And last but not least, this thing around my neck, little flashlights. Super helpful for working in engine bays when you can't really hold the light. But I'll let you know when I'm wrapping this up and if I run into any other obstacles. Maybe an hour later and we're all bolted back up. Really the only thing I can think of, our throttle body needs to be torqued to seven Newton meters and the intake needs to be torqued to 15 Newton meters. So do keep in mind that, invest in a torque wrench, do the right thing and also invest in the extra couple seconds it takes to label things because labeling those three connectors was super helpful and anything else that you think you might confuse just go ahead and slap some tape and a label on it it'll help you down the road but other than that it really wasn't too difficult putting this back together was not very hard after disassembling it step by step it's about 10 o'clock i'm gonna go grab some dinner inside and i'll be back out with the laptop with our enet cable to program our new fuel pump so that the car recognizes it and we'll be all set. Quick note in case you're concerned about tuning, the easiest way to do it is through boot mode and if you don't have boot mode, don't worry about it. Keys Motorsports has you covered because with your purchase of this fuel pump, they have you covered with the boot mode software. I don't know exactly how it works. Uh, reference the listing page linked down below. Reach out to Brian with any questions you might have and yeah. Okay, tuning time. We have our car hooked up to the OBD with our ENET cable. Power this thing on. And I just figured out how we enabled the Dorsch pump. It's actually pretty easy. We just go into our map, I'm running stage 293 octane, and go into configure. Probably gonna actually mess around with my purples because they are 
insane right now. But variables aside, we go down to high pressure fuel pump. Go over to this box here. As you can see, we have the option to do the XDI and Dorsch. We did the Dorsch stage one, so we'll select that. And I'm gonna mess around with my burbles real quick. We'll reflash and see if this worked. All right, it's a few weeks later, about two weeks later, after completing the Dorsch stage one high pressure fuel pump upgrade here. The good news is we did everything right and this was a successful install. The coating went beautifully. A side note on the front of coating, Make sure you have a fully charged battery before trying to code your car. My car had been sitting for about a month and hadn't been charged before trying to flash and I ran into an error where I couldn't complete the flashing until I had a fully charged battery. So that was kind of a little bit of a setback, not a big deal, but do make sure your battery is fully charged, have it plugged into a charger, not something to mess around with. The bad news is my high pressure fuel pump actually wasn't blown um, after bit more troubleshooting we found out it was just a coil it was just an ignition coil so that was slightly disappointing to find out but I am super glad to have installed the Dorsch stage one upgrade because we do have 45% more fuel flow now I think it's a noticeable difference when driving the car there's certainly no shortage of fuel supply at this point cars running beautifully and I don't think I've really seen much of a, a difference in my fuel economy it might have dropped slightly but definitely well worth the power. All in all, a great experience. I'm glad to have a high pressure fuel pump replacement under my belt at this point. It wasn't really as difficult as I had thought. It's just a lot of disassembly to get to the pump. And then once you're there, it's really just those four bolts to remove it. So not too challenging of an install. I know this video is pretty long at this point, so I don't want to drag it out anymore, but I hope you guys enjoy this video. I hope you found it helpful. As always, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. Thank you so much to Keys Motorsports for making this video possible. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you next time on JD Cars.